Welcome, aloha to, um, to the TUI revolution on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, I'm your host, I'm Peter Rossig. We're here to talk about um, an ongoing revolution in transportation, sometimes called micromobility, which includes a variety of uh, small, generally low speed vehicles, human powered or electric, privately owned or part of uh, shared fleets. And for me, personal mobility also includes walking and powered wheelchairs. So joining me today to talk about this is our guest, Shivani Ramos, a journalist with Y Business Magazine. Uh, she just published an article in the August edition called You Don't Need Four Wheels to Go Electric. And uh, in full disclosure, I want to tell you that Shivani was a student of mine in a journalism class I taught at the University of Hawaii a few years ago. I tried to scare her away from journalism. But I didn't succeed, and I'm glad about that. But before joining Hawaii Business, uh, Shivani was a digital uh, content producer at KITV4 and an intern, intern at Hawaii News Now. Thank you, Shivani, and welcome. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hi, Peter. Thanks for having me. OK. So um, tell us a little bit about your job at Hawaii Business, first of all. Uh, do you cover anything in particular? Do you have what we used to call a beat, or how does that work? Um, I cover a wide variety of things, but my main um, interest is in transportation. <laughs> so I do a lot of transportation-related stories like this one. OK. And, and how did you come to write this particular article? Was this your idea or would the editor say, go figure this out or how did that happen? It was my idea. Um, I've noticed a lot of kids riding e-bikes around my neighborhood. And when I go to our office in downtown Honolulu, I've seen those e-scooter or bike rentals lying around. So I thought, hmm, are people actually riding these things? So I just thought it was interesting because we've seen more and more people are just starting to use them. So, and I did a little bit of research and I found out there was a state report that said in August, 2021, there was about like 16,000 electric vehicle sales, which was about an increase from like about 30.6% 30, 30 from the same month the year before. So I was like, oh, electric vehicles, like electric car sales are up, but, I've noticed a lot of e-bike sales are also up too, and a lot of people are riding it. So I was thinking, this is interesting because from my perspective too, I don't have a driver's license yet. I only have my permit, so I can't buy an electric car. So that's why I wanted to dig more deeper into these alternative modes of transportation. So you're not a rider of the alternative modes of transportation yet, I see. No, I, my, main form of transportation is the bus actually <laughs> very reliable that's good i'm a bus rider myself um so and, and it's interesting you're talking about the numbers of electric vehicles but of course we really don't know how many of these electric bikes or scooters or whatever are out there because there are they required to register or is there any way to figure out how many there are there is um i think it's state law that you have to register your e-bike so oh. like there's numbers out there i just don't have them at the top of my head right now <laughs> I, I have a feeling it may be the law you have to register your e-bike but i have a feeling there are a lot of them out yeah. there are not registered so uh we see the growth clearly uh, but we don't really know yet how uh, we have no way of knowing at this stage how how many there really are and you know i guess we could go around to all the stores and ask how many are they selling but that you can buy them online too, so that's that's hard. So, just in general, as you started looking into this, what did you what did you learn? What did you discover about these alternative modes of transportation? You know, I didn't realize these alternative modes of transportation were so popular. Like one of my sources that I interviewed said that a national report ranked Hawaii as having the greatest potential for micro mobility to succeed. So I was thinking, oh, we, I didn't realize this was a thing because in the, on the mainland, I thought it made more sense because there are more roads and then we're just an island. But I learned that more people are using these 
personal electric vehicles for short distance trips versus having to use a car. So I thought just like, that was interesting because you can essentially, you can drive, park your car somewhere and then you can just hop on your e-bike and go on that last mile ride to your, whether it's your workplace or just doing just errands in general. So I thought that was important too, because not only are, if people are using more of these electric vehicles, it it's helps, um, it contributes to the state's goal of going carbon neutral by 2045. Yeah, and I guess the other thing I think that's, if, you know, if you're not a rider of these vehicles, it's reducing congestion somewhat, uh, and especially with, uh, with parking so tough in downtown or Waikiki or even in Kakako, uh, if you can park a little bit away and then and get yourself on a, a scooter or an e-bike and get to where you're going. That, that makes, you don't have to think about parking in Waikiki, which is, as you know, tough, tough going. So uh, I guess the assumption is every, that most people who ride these things are young people. Uh, is that a, well, what do you think? Is that, a, is that true? No, that's not true at all. That's what, that's another thing I learned when I um, interviewed the marketing manager at eBikes Hawaii. She said that before eBikes were like, she said that eBikes became more popular, especially during the pandemic. But before then, the demographic wasn't the young people. It was actually the old people. Well, I don't want to say old, but it's just like <laughs> that category. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you say old. <laughs> Speaking as an old person, I can let you use that word for sure. Uh, what, what else? What else did she say about that? She, she said um, a lot of old people were buying e-bikes just for it because a lot of people have mobility issues. So having the e-bikes comes in handy, especially since you don't really need to rely on just pedaling as much. So that was something interesting I also learned. You know, I did, a, my wife and I do a, a bicycle touring in Europe. And um, I remember one trip we were on, uh, it was in, in Holland actually. Uh, and most of Holland is pretty flat, but we were going along the coast and the, the, we were kind of going on these dunes that were going up and down and up and down. So we'd ride down a little hill and up a little hill. And of course, riding down a little hill was easy and riding up those little hills was not. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these two, and I'll say the old people, came whizzing by. And they just left us in the, you know, in their in their wake. And we couldn't imagine what had happened. And uh, we finally caught up with them at a rest stop. They were, they'd been there a long time. And I went over to look at their bikes, and they were riding electric bicycles. And that's, uh, that's about five or six years ago. And I think every time we've gone since, I've seen it more and more, uh, I mean, you obviously you have to have some ability to balance yourself and you have to be somewhat mobile, but you don't have to be a, an Olympic runner to, uh, you know, ride a bike. Uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, of us old people, we're not quite ready for the wheelchair yet, but we are, uh, we're, we're interested in that. So, okay, that's great. So you, we found, what else did you learn? What else did you find out about uh, this, as you researched the article? Um, I actually did my story prior to doing this one. It was on mobility hubs. So mm -hmm. I, it's essentially the city is planning to make some mob mobility hubs at some of the rail stations. So that's where you can essentially park your car and have the opportunity to hop on a bus and the rail when it eventually opens to the public. So that was the other thing too. I learned it's important to have infrastructure and resources for people to use these vehicles, whether it's the using the rentals around town or actually purchasing one. I think it's important because it helps solve that first mile, last mile problem. Okay. Um, and what do you, what do we need in infrastructure? Do you, did you, people talk to you about, Everybody uses that word a lot, infrastructure. 
it's an ugly word to me. But anyway, uh, what, what does that mean, really, infrastructure? I mean, we're talking about uh, these two wheeled vehicles. Um, it's more so building more protective bike lanes around the city, you know, like sharing the road. A lot of the bike riders I talked to talked about their experiences almost getting hit and just the frustration of like this love and hate relationship they have with cars. So that's the, I, look, I looked it up and the city is planning to build more of these bike infrastructures. So it helps the bike riders feel more comfortable using those, those um, sorts of things. Yeah, seems to me there's like a chicken and egg story here, you know. <laughs> Uh, why, why aren't there very many bike riders or two wheel vehicle riders? And people will say, well, I think it's dangerous. And if there were more, it would not be so dangerous if there were more riders. So can't get more riders because it's too dangerous, but we won't get safer really until we have so many bicyclists and so many riders that the city, uh, which is working on it, it's a long, hard road, but. Uh, they are. They certainly have added more more bike lanes in the last uh, few years than they ever did before that. And and uh, there are a lot of them that are kind of in progress. And sometimes they're good with little you know with little curbs that protect the the bicyclists. Sometimes it's just paint on the on a on the road, uh, which I think they call pharaohs. And uh, you know that paint won't save you from a car. That's for sure. But. Anyway, so it seems like there, there, there are more and more of these. And, and did you look into, you know, what is, what are, what's the cost factor, do you think, uh, of, uh, in getting into this kind of transportation? The cost of um, cost of buy, like if I want, e-bike? If I want to buy one, uh, what oh. is it, what's it going to cost me? Oh, that's a good question. I. For e bike specifically, I um, it can vary, but roughly it can cost anywhere around a thousand to up to eight thousand. Right. <laughs> so it's it's sort of on the pricey side. Yeah, the the big ones the are definitely can be can go right up there. Of course, you can spend a lot of money on a regular bicycle too, uh, a high a high precision bicycle. Uh, that's made for riding in races and stuff like that, and made of you know the lightest uh, material available. But what's interesting to me right now is if you go into Costco or or, uh, or Walmart, Sam's Club, you can buy one of those littleish little kinds of electric bikes. They're almost like tiny bikes, but they have an electric motor, and uh, you can buy them in those stores or you can buy them online for like four hundred dollars. So, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, something we see a lot of kids on them, I think, now. And so they, they're obviously the, the range of, of, uh, of vehicles that you can buy if we're talking about bicycles is, is pretty wide. And what about, you know, the, did you, you looked into the shared scooters a little bit too, right? The, uh, the ones that we find all over nowadays are all over Kaka'ako, they're in Ward area, they're down in Waikiki, and some downtown. Uh, for people that don't know, what's involved in those? What's involved in riding one of those? So it's kind of like um, Biki in a sense. So like you can go up to one of the um, e-scooters that you see, um, lying around different private businesses and it on the scooter it'll have you download an app and then you can do all of those things like set up the scooter and just pay there so it's I think it's like a dollar to ride for half an hour so you can just take it and then go do your business and then park it at the it on the app it'll have a map of where the nearest station is so it's kind of like beaky Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I've seen two or three different kinds in, in Waikiki. I know there are some other companies that want to want to get here, but I, I guess the law is still a little confusing about what's okay and what isn't okay. So that's got to kind of got to be worked out. So um, Hawaii Business is a business magazine. 
Um, why would you think people, your kind of readers, would be interested in these kind these subjects specifically? This is sort of an interesting question because I want to backtrack a little bit because when I first heard about Hawaii business, I thought the same thing too. It's all, it's all about, it's just a magazine about business and that's true to some extent, but at Hawaii business, we cover more than that actually. We cover a lot of big issues that impact our island home, its people, companies and nonprofits, climate change, the cost of living, entrepreneurship, innovation, a lot of those big issues. So what I think my article is interesting to our readers because majority of our readers are people in businesses, whether it's like the top CEOs or just anyone in startups, entrepreneurs, and with their offices being mainly in downtown and more people coming back now that everything's open up, parking's can be difficult and expensive. Like you said earlier, it's difficult to find just an affordable parking space and just having to combat that traffic. So when I talked to my sources for the story, all of them said that they try not to drive when they can and opt to use their e-bikes, their one wheels, scooter skateboards when they can because of this. And the city has done and is still doing a lot to make areas more micro mobility friendly, whether it's more bike lanes, bus lanes, or just more of these ride share and rentals. So mm -hmm. people care about these things, especially the different modes of transportation because it helps contribute to the cleaner environment. And I guess if you're in a business, the only way you're gonna get customers is if they have a way to get to where you are, if uh, you're still doing the, the brick and mortar kind of thing. So. Uh, I think that's why so many have been, so many businesses have been open to Bicky. They they like to see uh, uh, the Bicky stops near their near their business. 7-Eleven uh, has been a big supporter of Bicky, for example, because I think they believe people will use Bicky and then stop off at 7-Eleven or other stores nearby to uh, to take advantage of that. You mentioned the one wheel, and I I bet. Very few people who are watching uh, know what a one wheel is. Can you can you explain that? It's essentially a self balancing skateboard, but it ha it's the name itself. It basically has a wheel, like one wheel in the middle, so you can, It's like you can, It's like a balancing board. <laughs> like you just put your feet on and it goes. There's no remote or anything. You just need to charge it. <laughs> okay. Wow. And you, in the article, I was, I was interested. You say there's a bunch of people that ride these every week and get together and do that. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I talked to um, the, this group called Hawaii Float Sessions, which is basically a group of people that ride around the island on one wheels and uh, other personal electric vehicles. It's just like a big group of people that love to do what they do like <laughs> it's essentially like how there's i know there's a lot of people that have like motorcycle groups and they just do like ride around towns it's essentially like that but on one wheels <laughs> and how when you say a big group how many are we talking about um, did you guess on a typical Ooh. yeah yeah uh no i can't yeah i don't want to speak for them but uh, they have a Facebook group page, and that group page has roughly, I would say, over 800 members. Wow. So, so a if, lot of people. If a quarter of them showed up on any given day, that's that's a lot. <laughs> and where do they ride? They start over by, by, uh, by the bike factory, is that right? Yeah, they start around the bike factory at Kakaako Waterfront Park, and then they just make their way down towards Waikiki. I've never seen that. I'd like, I gotta go check it out. When, when, what days are they out there? Uh, usually Wednesdays and Fridays. And I know that Bike Factory also does monthly ride outs too. Okay. I just don't know when, but I know they do. <laughs> Interesting. So you got the one wheels and, and on the one kind of one end, you've got the electric bike, which is uh, new but still kind of understandable. What other what other kinds of 
of uh, alternate transportations have you seen or do you think people will see around town? Um, I, I've seen some of the electric skateboards around town and also the electric unicycles, which <laughs> I haven't really seen much of, but I know people ride them. So it's like when you, I thought of unicycle at first, I really thought of just like the standard circus one, but it's more high tech <laughs> so than that. I'm sure again, people don't know what that is. Can you tell us a little more about what an electric unicycle is like? It's um, kind of like the one wheel, but it's more so it's like this circular device and then there's two platforms where you can put your feet on. Oh, all right. that's how you go. Yeah, that, that's that scares me just looking at them. <laughs> I, you know, everybody they're standing very still and very stiff kind of and, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. I used to have a Segway here in Hawaii and I used to ride it to work and uh, that's a self-balancing thing and there's only two wheels but uh, it was it's made to be very easy to ride and, and but the unicycles uh, those those are the ones that really really scary I think so <laughs> anyway which which one if you could if I gave you the money right now and said go out and get yourself one what would you get oh that's a hard part I'm actually I've been actually researching and debating which one I want and I'm in between an e-bike and an electric skateboard because I can take both of those on the bus <laughs> like I'm leaning more towards the skateboard because it's a little bit more compact and I know that the bus has the bike rack in the front but sometimes that bike it's only you can only put two bikes on there so like if some like there's two bikes there already you have to wait for the next one versus if I just have a skateboard I just take it up on with me. There you go. Do you have have you skateboarded old fashioned kind already in your? Oh yeah. yeah I have. I I have one. I I use it just recreationally, like around my block. Uh -huh. Did you ever take it up on campus and use it up at UH? I no. You know what? I should have done that, but I was too afraid of hitting someone while I rode because, <laughs> <laughs> like, it can that. Like UH can get crowded sometimes, especially during like the peak hours where people are rushing to class. I bet, I'm sure. Well, I've been up there and I've seen that, but I'll tell you, we, I was just in a meeting and uh, we were talking about all this and uh, and somebody said that the, the uh, director of commuter services at UH, and I'm afraid I don't know her name, but uh, they really, they're really doing a lot and they're really promoting uh, a lot of different things to get people out of cars, to get, you know, to get people to be able to move around on campus. So I'm going to give you a free tip here before I get her on the show. You can go and you might consider doing an article about the commuter uh, services at UH Manoa because apparently, and I, I just know this from somebody who was talking about it at the meeting, but apparently they really are doing a very good job there and uh, you know have a lot of in interesting ideas uh, and I know that Dickey recently just expanded up to to UH and you know what happens at Manoa affects all of us because the traffic and the you know the stuff that that it, we're all kind of caught up in that uh, in whatever is happening at UH if UH is in session we know it just because we're sitting in traffic and uh, you know at certain times of day so uh, I'm gonna I you might want to look into that but I'm going to talk to this person too and see what uh, what uh, you know they're doing up there because that's a little city in, in many ways I think and, and it could be a very interesting uh, model for for what's going on so but it's Andrew, you already know how to ride a skateboard, so you could probably jump on a one wheel and not uh, not even think about it twice. You think? You know what? I I was interested, but at the same time, I think I'll try it, but at a park 
versus like I don't trust myself going on the road with that. <laughs> well, we want you to try it on a, in a park too, or in a parking lot or something. We don't want yeah. the first ride you take to be down Nimitz Highway. You know what I mean? I think uh, I think obviously you got to learn to ride it and get comfortable with it and stuff. But uh, as you say, you can carry it on the bu on the bus. You can take it up to your office. You don't have to. You know, if you leave an eight thousand dollar electric bike parking on the uh, uh, the street, you're gonna you may run into a, a problem there. So we only have about five minutes left. So let me ask you, what do you think is the future here? Are we gonna is this kind of a fad that's gonna go away, or you think it's gonna continue to uh, to you know expand? Or tell me what. I think we're going to see more of these vehicles popping up on the streets. You know, it's definitely more affordable than buying a car for a lot of people, especially with Hawaii's high cost of living. And the state is going to have to do a lot more things to make transportation alternatives or just provide different modes. Um, this year, for example, was a good way that the state did just to like a good example because the legislature actually passed the e-bike rebate program, which is where they basically fund it, where the fund pays $500 or 20% off the cost of an e-bike. So that just encourages more people to say, hey, you can buy this. It's the state's making it more affordable. So I definitely think it's not a fad that's gonna go away. I think more people are going to turn to these electric vehicles just to get around town as much as possible versus having just to hop in our cars. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, obviously I agree with you. I wouldn't be doing this program every two weeks, but, uh, and, and you know, it, people always say, oh, Hawaii is such a paradise for bicycling. And it's good in many ways, but I mean, you know, if you're a working person and you're downtown as you are, and you want to go to a meeting, uh, you don't want to get to that meeting, you know, all sweaty and, and you know, windblown. And, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of hair to get blown around. But uh, so this, the electric bike kind of creates new new opportunities in that area. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about this and I hope you'll continue to watch this trend. And, and uh, I'm certainly going to see what's happening. And, and uh, I really appreciate the time you've spent uh, here today. And I'm, I will tell you, uh, I'm very proud of you for having stuck to journalism and having gotten a, a job and doing actual writing, you know, not just television and not just, which is great, but uh, being out there as a, uh, on, the, on the front lines with writing, there aren't too many of you left. So uh, congratulations. And uh, I, I will say it's time to thank you very much. It's time to say aloha to the people who have tuned in. Uh, in two weeks, we hope to talk to the new executive director of the Hawaii Bicycling League. His name is Travis Council, and he was here earlier, but now he's back as executive uh, director of the Bicycling League, and we'll see what he has to say in a couple of weeks. Uh, this, uh, you've been watching the Two Wheel Revolution on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, we've been talking to Shivani Ramos of the Hawaii Business Magazine, and we really are grateful to her for being here. We want to Thank all of our viewers, both of you, all, all of you, uh, however many of you are out there today or, or in the future. Uh, if you want to uh, get email advisories with a complete listing of all shows on special events, uh, you can sign up at thinktechhawaii.com and you will be able to get a huge variety, 30 or so different hosts talking about every subject you can imagine. And um, so we'll be back. Please tune in. Please tell your friends to tune in. Uh, I'm Peter Rossig. Uh, this has been the Two Wheel Revolution. And thank you for joining us. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.